Game number one, King of the Hill, and take a look at this, making his head-to-head -head debut in this season. It's Ah Crap, who has got to be fired up, wants to get one back to open up this set. Yeah, you gotta think this is him coming out for blood after that 2v2 set, a lot of frustration on his face. On the tower, thinking this is the moment where he really wants to establish himself and also just get one back. In the off season, he played a lot of really interesting off-meta decks. He did also play uh, a decent amount of Expo, and here we go, see Hog EQ. And that Hog will get a swing in. Hunter comes down a little late. And a great skeleton surround by Aw Crap there to slow down that Dark Prince. Stop it entirely, excuse me. Very, very nice work from Aw Crap. He's, he looks like he's playing angry right now. I love it. <laughs> I, I truly do. This is this is great. Another uh, looks like it might be two, just one hog swing, but ahead now is the first minute down. You see Ren and Kava kind of go, okay, all right, you got me. And again, defense nice and clean. And both guys resetting at this moment, trying to figure out how to break through. Aw oh, Crap has two big swings from his Hog Rider in on that tower, but it's nothing that Hedenkava can't make up right away. It has not gone to his Inferno Tower yet on defense, so Aw oh, Crap does have that option. He sees the, the, bar, the Battle Ram behind and immediately goes opposite lane. And that Battle Ram won't connect. Very, very well played doing a good job keeping his Inferno Tower healthy. A great job. So entering double Elixir time so far, Aw Crap in control, but not by a lot, and it is 3M Ram. And now with the three Musketeers coming down, this is a moment of, we're just gonna have to see how this exchange goes, knowing that Aw Crap does not have a large spell in his deck. This is gonna be a real challenge to deal with for Aw Crap as we get deeper and deeper into this matchup. So far playing very, very well on that left-hand side. A lot of defense being played, not a lot of elixir for the right-hand side. However, that Musketeer does lock. Of course, we saw, we opened up the day with that 3M Royal Hogs deck up against, uh, against Hog EQ, and that spread the field even more and gave Faye a lot of trouble. Big four shots in on that right-hand tower from the Musketeer. That Dark Prince is, needs to be stopped, but still connects to the tower. That splash damage can be so frustrating. Hen and Kava playing very well right now. Yeah, another shot off. Another shot off on the right-hand side down to 1021, and another set of Musketeers. They just will not stop coming. And Earthquake is a tough spell to use on the Musketeers, knowing that the damage is, is pretty minimal. Double bar barrel comes down the right side. And a lot to deal with on the left and only four elixir to do it. Does take one shot from the Musketeer, but does decently well with that. But again, three Musketeers are close at hand. The, the Hunter snowball combination. Wow, beautiful defense on the right by Kava and, and AC acknowledges that. The way the snowball bounced that hog right back into the hunter shot. Yeah, very, very well played by Hen and Kava, making sure to mitigate 100% of the damage coming down from that hog rider. And at this point, it does feel like it's just going to be slow and steady to win the race. But I do not know how Aw Crap is going to be able to get this. The Battle Ram is not aggroed by the Inferno Tower. That Dark Prince splash damage should get on the tower as well. And those two Musketeers are locked. And there you go, down to 147. So. Very, very close to being done here is AC. You see the frustration on his face. And he will get two or three hog swings in here, but at this point, it does not really matter. And even if he does sell out on the right-hand side on defense, look at this left-hand side, that dual lane pressure. So, so devastating. Dark Prince goes to the to the archers and hits the tower as well. One down, Ren and Kava with the win. And that's the second time today we've seen that Hog EQ deck really struggle with Three Musketeers. Not having a big spell makes it, basically when you get in double overtime or a double elixir, you're just, you're done, honestly. Yeah, I mean, that's 
certain decks have really benefited from the no big spell that's sort of been a part of the meta the last few months. Pump Bow being one of them. I was them. just going to say, let's <laughs> let's hear all about Pump Bow. <laughs> it was, it's been a nice couple months for me. Let's put it that way. Magic Archer comes down. You see that the Bar Barrel has to be played to stop the Magic Archer that would have connected to the tower had the Musketeer just walked towards it. Haven't seen a ton of Magic Archer this season, so this has been an interesting day. Seeing some 3Ms, some Magic Archer. Yeah, it feels like we're kind of taking a, a trip back in time. Even the flying machine. Zappy's fascinating. Kind of makes me feel graveyard, but then you have the magic archer and the bandit. Ooh, and a slight miss on that snowball. I guess it still does help those zappies along. This is a fascinating King of the Hill so far, deck-wise. Yeah, and that is a great, great Magic Archer placement. Ooh, yeah, a lot of geometry there, and it is Royal Hogs, so some Fireball bait out for Royal. And look at those barbs coming in to clean up the Hogs that do still do a decent amount of damage. So I wonder if if Henenkava is running Royal Hogs as well, I was about to say. And barbs as well to meet them. Great job here. Very, very interesting King of the Hill game. So you're, again, you're talking about trip down memory lane, and now we're seeing Magic Archer Royal Hogs coming back. Of course, a little more traditional, or a little more current Fireball Bay out of Royal. And now we'll have to see whether or not this poison is the big difference maker, being a large spell. Royal is on the tower. Henenkaba oh, has nothing boy. to respond. That is going to be a huge amount of damage. We are now within poison range. Just got caught looking. Yeah, well, Royal's gonna have to get on tower, obviously, but just the, the giant snowball. But expect him maybe to start now splitting lane pressure. There you go, Barb split in the back. So as they get closer, we'll see the hog split up front. What an interesting day of Clash Royale this has already been. Now you see Henan Kava forced to split the Zappies here to stop, slow down that barb and not take too much damage on the right-hand side, assuming that he can take that bottom left tower from Royal. And those Zappies don't even get a shot off there, picked apart by the Flying Machine and the Musketeer. And as you said, Rich, Royal only having the Snowball there, getting some good value in. I was mixing spells for a moment. So poison down, this will certainly be helpful. Those hogs are going to get some shots on the tower. Snowball into help, down to wow. 815, 788, under 700 hit points. That was a big, big push for Ren and, for Ren and Kava. And keep in mind that, again, the fact that his opponent cannot get directly on tower really opens the door for him to steal this game. Yeah, and knowing that the barbs are going to be the best response every single time to those hogs, the poison will come down again and get just an insane amount of value. You gotta expect the Hogs here. He's gotta make a push. Royal can seal this. There, there we go, Hogs is. come in. Giant Snowball behind, potentially. Just enough HP on those barbs to tank for a second, and Tower should go down. Royal takes this from Hen and Kava. One down for each team. So one down for Royal, who Played that very well, especially holding on near the end to, to get that victory. But up next, a guy who's so confident this season, it's Carnage. Yeah, Royal there looked like he had run into a wall at the worst possible time, not having a great amount of direct spell damage, but was able to break through at the very end. Very well played by Hanan Kava, but now Carnage is up for pain gaming. And Carnage looking a little spammy here to open things up. We see a Lumberjack. Obviously, it could be many different ar archetypes, but everyone knows Golem is Royal's favorite. So possibly Goblin Giant Sparky here with these two opening cards. There we go. And In a big push on the right lane. The second that Sparky fell, but very nicely defended. He'll eat a little bit of damage, but not as much as Carnage would have liked. Okay. Maybe I spoke too soon. Wow. A thousand damage in on that right-hand tower. And now we have a Lumberjack coming in looking to rage up this Sparky. 
Wow, that was a great interaction for Royal. Lumberjack on the tower. And so Karn, the, oh, sorry. I was going to say, so the e will take care of that easily, but now Royal gets one back. Gets one back. It looked like Carnage had really taken control and punished Royal pretty heavily. And you see the mental games that that plays to Carnage, very frustrated with that interaction. And Royal certainly ahead on Elixir right now by a fair margin. And mirroring the same push he opened up with on the right-hand side. This time, nothing gets through. Yep. Not letting that happen again. Real Ghost will do a great job cleaning up this Lumberjack and creating a counter push. Yeah, he has to play those guards. That Royal Ghost will get at least one shot, probably two. I got all the way through. Now we got Sparky against Pekka. You can imagine this is probably where we're going to finally see the Giant come down, but he has to pay attention to this right-hand lane. Yeah, smart move by Carnage, putting pressure on this side, and now I don't know if the Goblin Giant will make it down in time. He has to play the guards instead. Great use of the guards there. Slow down the P.E.K.K.A., block the E-Wiz. And now you might see the Goblin Giant come after this shot. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's preserved a hundred, almost 100% of the health on <laughs> that Sparky. A very, really great set of interactions for Royal, and Carnage knows it. And the Lumberjack gets the E-Wiz off the board just in time to get that Sparky to save its shot. So goes instead at the, uh, at the P.E.K.K.A., and now it's just desperation mode from Carnage Ooh. playing what he can, but the dash avoids the Sparky shot. A very nicely placed bandit there, which looked like it was about to take the tower. The Sparky was basically useless at that point. I mean, even if the bandit had absorbed the shot, that would have been at least valuable, but dashing, not taking the damage at all. And now you see Royal playing both lanes. Yep. Seeing the Sparky come down in the right-hand lane, not a good place to play as Goblin Giant. And now the Goblin Giant will get on the tower, will get a bunch of hits in. This was a very nice swerve by Royal. And look at that, guards just in time to pick up the P.E.K.K.A. So a good change of pace from the Romanian. A very healthy Sparky in the right-hand lane. Maybe going to meet a bandit once again. Goblin Giant might get a hit in. There we go. And Carnage just playing up against the ropes right now. He does have quite a bit on the board, though, so Royal does have to respond now in both lanes. Carnage going all in on the right. Someone's got to catch that bandit. Beautiful, beautiful. That Goblin Giant played nearly at the edge, probably right at the edge of that bandit's range. It really feels like who's the first to make a mistake. Now remember, we are in lowest single tower here in King of the Hill, so if things stay as they are, Royal would take the victory. But one slip from either player could be the difference. And and here you go, what we have on the, on the ground. Side. There's the Goblin Giant. That Ooh. Pekka got dangerously close, and this is a moment for Carnage to keep the pressure up. And Bandit gonna dash through. That Bandit dash might be really, really big news because now Royal has to play both lanes with even more care. E was the left-hand side getting on tower. And there is no snowball to catch these minions. Barbell on the tower, minions gonna take out the skellies. Oh my word, Carnage just took this thing in control. Bandit dash on wow. the tower. That this is, is it. Really, really tough for Royal right now. He's still just barely in the game, although Zap should be able to come back around. Not enough to take out the tower. It's just one more poison for Carnage, so Royal has to sell out here. Carnage knows Royal has to sell out here. A nice guard surround there on the Royal Giant, or Ro Royal Ghost, excuse me. Just not gonna happen. Poison will be down, that's gonna be it. Carnage takes the third game of King of the Hill. Very, very well played to come from behind. And now Lapakati back out for Immortals, trying to do uh, not the impossible, but he's got to take down Carnage and Wen just to get to set number three. Well, we did just see him take out B-Rad, Tommy, and Nitrum. So, you know, if there's anybody who can do it uh, as, with a young, relatively inexperienced for competitive play, but 
I mean, he's been through the fire already. Yeah, yeah, and you can see here he's just playing it slow in the beginning, leaking a few elixir. Most likely hog EQ here from Carnage. Not gonna see a Valkyrie once we see those skeletons, or most likely won't. Barb's come down to meet that hog. And a high Inferno Tower actually catches the barbs before the flying machine. The flying machine will just pick that apart and then still demand a response in the right-hand lane. So Lapakati going with this fireball bait deck that Royal used so well earlier. And look at that. Very well played. The Ice Golem saves that tower from being eviscerated by the flying machine, but still, that's a ton of damage. Carnage just choosing to reset and eat it, knowing that there's not much he can do at this point. Yeah, and also the idea that there probably isn't a big spell in Lapakati's deck. He may be able to, or in his mind, he's thinking, maybe I can play solid defense and win this game somehow, but that was a really rough start. Yeah, that was pretty brutal. Hog EQ up against Fireball Bait, but again, Hog EQ doesn't have a big spell, not one that works for these cards. Yeah, definitely. Again, a great job using those bats to distract the Inferno Tower from getting on the flying machine. And Lapicati goes all in on the right-hand side with just the straight Royal Hogs push. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he doesn't need a lot at this stage. Lumberjack handles the Hog Rider fairly easily in the left-hand lane. And still gets a swing in on the tower. So now we have Lapicati in the lead in both lanes and Carnage struggling to find a way to break through. Barbs don't mount much of a counter push, but able to get in front of the Musketeer. Doesn't quite save from the Inferno Tower. Giant Snowball comes in to get the bats off the board, but one stays alive long enough. The question is, does Lapakati continue to sell out in the right-hand lane, or does he start splitting his hogs now? Yeah, that is a very good question. Try to create dual lane pressure to get Carnage off his kilter to then, in theory, break through in the right-hand lane. As you can see here, Carnage is holding all of his elixir for defense, strictly for defense, kind of holding off on his hog pushes for the moment. Well, and Lapicati is not playing very aggressive either right now, and I do like that decision. A lot of maturity here from the young man. He knows that he can just play this one out. He's got such a significant lead. As long as he makes no serious mistakes, this game is his. Yep. He doesn't care about taking the tower. He knows that that lowest single tower will save him at the end of this two minutes and 40 seconds of overtime. If he can break through, he can. If not, he'd rather just play solid defense. And Carnage knows it, so he's just gonna double, triple, quadruple down on defense. Well, Carnage knows he has to pick up the pace here, so you see the barbs just waiting and ready. Earthquake trying to help with the giant snowball in as well. <laughs> they just threw everything he had at him and, and did not break through again. Two minutes left in sudden death overtime. La Picotti looking in control. Could make this very interesting. And we might get what I wanted, that La Picotti when matchup for yeah, game five. Yeah, that will be a crazy match. And then most likely the winner, if, if you know La Picotti does win that set, we could even see a rematch in the final set. Well, a lot of ground to be covered as of yet, Andrew. Still a minute 42 remaining in sudden death. Snowball comes in, does get the barbs away, and they are focused on the ice golem. I really like that play by Carnage. And here we go. This time you see Lapicati saying, all right, you're going to start breaking through. I'll put a little more pressure on. And, and then we'll get a couple hogs to escape. This might be tower down here. Snowball in. And that tower is below 100 HP. We are going to snowball cycle this out. Just needs two more. And Lapicati will be pushing this to game number five. Pain Gaming will bring out when Immortals is still riding on Lapicati. It's so great to see this kid coming out and playing like this on this stage. Has to be careful, though. He just yeah. did sell out pretty heavily. Barbs do come down. And that hog will not get to the tower. So a little <laughs> aggressive there. You see Lapicati getting annoyed. The annoyed goblin. 
not being able to break through. Hogs come down once again. Snowball maybe to follow. One hog escapes. Oh, that's going to be it. Mapakati put it away. We are going to game number five. So here we go, game number five. Ask and you shall receive the two young stars, Lapakati facing off against Wen. And everything riding on this game to decide the match, essentially, Immortals has to take this to set number three. And looking like Lapakati might be going back to the well one more time. And we've all seen that even though people might know he's playing it, they still cannot stop him. There's the high mortar, one of my favorite plays when playing against Hog Rider. So here we go. Can Lapakati pull out magic one more time? And a really, really great use of the skeletons there by Wen to distract the mortar. So the first time we're seeing Hog Rider so far this season, not in the Hog EQ deck. And, and you see Lapakati kind of tilt, tilt his head there. Hog Electro Dragon? Yeah, very interesting. Expecting maybe a NATO in there with the Ice Wiz and the Tombstone. Yeah, this is one of those decks that maybe Wen and his team just was like, all right, Lapakati's probably going to play Mortar. And then you see right there, the NATO can, and Lapakai's like, what, what is this deck? So it's Hog EQ, NATO, Ice Wiz Tombstone with E Drag. And sure. That is a straight up snipe yeah. on Lapakati's deck. He's, he's sitting there, how do I break through? Where do I place my mortar? I, I got to save it for defense, but I also need to create offensive push. You got the E Drag there that just destroys the charge and all, all the swarm troops. Fascinating deck. I mean, this will be the big question is, you know, Lapakati knows every matchup. He doesn't know this matchup. I, I mean, look, is it humanly possible he does? he's played against this? Maybe. Wow. Is it likely? I think not. And it's still, still another Hawk Rider hit in, but Lapakati just only 56 HP behind. And when chooses to, rather than activate King Tower, he chooses to, to haul back the Spear Goblins with the Tornado. And now maybe Lapakati can create some bit of pressure with that minion horde with NATO out of cycle. But the cycle of Wen's deck is so quick, it's already back in. This is really, really nutty. And now Wen throwing out some crying skeletons. I mean, this is what we talked about, Andrew, you and I, wow. that the idea of, you know, do you, do you go for a snipe on Lapakati in, in these tight situations and believe that he is playing his mortar bait deck? And what kind of risk is that? And at the moment, it looks like it was a really, really smart call here by Payne. Yeah, really, really paying off for Payne. The snowball does come in. That hog will not get a hit. Very well played defense by Lapakati. Just how is he going to break through? That, that tombstone catches the miner. The skeletons from the tombstone stop the prince charge. The NATO brings the minion horde together. Just all the answers in Wen's deck. This is really, really wild. And now you see Lapakati, rather than focus on the defense because he knows that Earthquake is in there, he's like, let me see if I can use these mortars to create some offensive pressure. And that Hog Rider is going to get. Wow, it does no get a hit. Oh, does that no, was that no swing? Uh, the Earthquake, I believe. Mortar's back up again. Mortar distracted by those skeletons. Hog Rider played in the center. Goblin Gang Bats, Will Miner go to the left-hand side here. No, not gonna happen now with that Barbro coming out, taking out the Goblin Gang. This is an incredible game of, of, like a battle of wits, if you will, right now. Well, a battle of wits for when, and a, a, now a battle of will for La Picotti. Can he, just by pure force of his skill, knowing this deck, as you said, the wits, but also Ooh. can he just can he just believe he can beat this deck? Every time he does stop that Hog Rider, the Earthquake is still doing a devastating amount of damage. And that Miner just not getting shots on tower. Giant Snowball and the Goblin Gang take care of the Hog Rider. 
Kadi is still playing this very, very well, but Wen just has all the answers. Earthquake comes down, stops the Spear Goblins, and now he's basically got double the HP on his right-hand tower. And so now you see La Picati going Prince into the lane he wants when he knows he's behind. At this point, he can't be content playing defense. He has to steal this thing. Miner goes in, gonna get caught by the Tombstone Skellies again. And this time, high mortar to, to pick up the hog. Bass will keep it from off the tower. And you see right there, Lapicati shaking his head. Just no way to break through. 45 seconds left. When in a position to secure first place for Pain Gaming. Lapicati trying to find a way. Tornado nearly gets that tower open for when the snowball just saves it. Naked Earthquake on that left-hand tower. 30 seconds left of gameplay. Wen has got this in the bag as long as he keeps up what he's doing. And now Lapicati sells out in the left-hand lane. Tornado pulls all that into the middle, and that Prince is not going to go back towards that tower now. It is stuck in the center. There you have it! Wen! Wow. Playing like a champion. Takes down Lapicati. Game five, King of the Hill, Pain Gaming is number one in the West. Yep, Immortals falls down three and two. Pain moves to the top.